my issue of the religion and the doctrine of the Hebrew Israelites. Now, for many years, I've often thought to myself how the name cult is defined. A cult is simply a group or organization that is started from a larger group or organization. And it sounds so vague, right? Because that, you know, it, that's many organizations out there. But if you often notice something about cults, they all have similar characteristics. They all have characteristics where they are, um, for the most part, not willing to take advice from other people. Um, they don't often have a, a teachable spirit. Um, and they are those that just know it all. But on the topic of Hebrew Israelites and their doctrine and their religion, it's interesting to me because they use the King James Version Bible um, for all of their information, right? They use very little history when trying to defend their points. They actually use a lot of Bible, which is amazing. I, 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 wow, KJV Version Bible, let's go for it. I'm with you. But the moment Hebrew Israelites and other people that try to use context of scripture out of context, it becomes a problem. And this is where I believe we should address these things. What the Hebrew Israelites are, they take commandments to a, they take the law to a whole nother level. First and foremost, they believe that if you don't take the law verbatim and adhere to it, even in the now, even after Jesus died on the cross, even after he fulfilled the law through him, if you don't adhere to all of the law, you are in sin. That's It says, then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men as washing of pots and of cups and many other things do the like. They had to do many other things before they got into their holies of holies. They had to take their shoes. They had to be dressed in a certain appearance. They had to take their shoes off. They had to uh, uh, um, take certain things uh, uh, away, burn incense. They had to, you know, before you could even get into the holies of holies, there were many things that had to be done. You had to be purified yourself to his face that he is not the Messiah and that he, he couldn't be the Messiah because if he was, why is he going back on his laws? Great point. Glad you asked. Very logical, rational way of thinking. He instilled these laws. If he was the Messiah of these laws, as he says he was, why is he not practicing these laws? They confronted him. Great point. Now, as Christians who have not just the Old Testament, but also the New Testament and understands what Jesus did on the cross, we can find out that the best interpreter of scripture are other scriptures. So this is one account where Jesus has told these religious people who were trying to keep the law that they are uh, denying him and rejecting. For well, ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own traditions. The, the, the Hebrew Israelites, these other false doctrines out here that, that say you must keep the entire law. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you, other brethren. Okay, um, honest to you, brethren, you followers of the truth. Let me say you followers of the truth, and let me say mainly shalom to the elect. Uh, I want to go on this video here uh, with this guy. I don't even know his channel. Um, Jefton Jones. <clears throat> okay, so he titles his video, My, My Issue with the Black Hebrew Israelites and Their Doctrine. And he can have that issue. I mean, he's allowed to. 
Um, I don't know why these jakes, I'm listening to them, why they just can't be themselves. You know, it seems to be that he's trying to be more than what he is. You know, I believe in Galatians, the fifth chapter, it said if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that's just how this guy is. But uh, another thing I noticed is that when it comes to our doctrines, and that's what it is, is doctrines with an S, somehow they managed to put all Hebrew Israelite doctrines together. And instead of saying, going into a particular sect or a particular group or what they teach. For instance, IUIC teaches mostly about laws, saving you being saved with the laws. We at Great Millstone, we teach you are to follow them the best of your abilities, but that's not going to save you. Uh, but the first commandment will, right? Ultimately, you have to be the elect. Um, and the elect will follow the first commandment. Now, going into what this guy is saying, his reasoning, he's saying that the, um, the uh, when Yahushua came, the um, which they call Jesus, um, they was doing the commandments of men, right? Because you had wicked uh, scribes and Pharisees, and they and what would they do? They would act like they was about the law, but they was never really about the law. This is why Yahushua, uh, 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 Matthew, I believe, twenty four or twenty five, he got on them. It might have been twenty five, got on them real heavy, because you had Jake that was claiming to be about the law, right? Which you see Jake's today, Israelites today who is about the law, but they don't really care about the Most High. And that's when the scriptures say, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. These people are trying to keep laws, but they're not uh, faithful. Okay? So I, I'm going to read a, quite a few scriptures to debunk this, this uh, thing where you don't have to try to keep laws to the best, best of your ability. Now, there's one scripture that came right right to mind right off the top now when we go to um, 1st John 3 and 4 it says whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law now these will be going to the men who have woken up to the truth and they would know the Israelites the reason why Yahweh had to come to bring mercy to the whole house of Israel and this is what Paul message was to the Israelites because you had Israelites who was claiming it was mostly about the law. Now Yahweh came with the spirit to, to prove that it was about the spirit. This is why he worked miracles as some Israelite groups uh, Israelite groups uh, say that he never worked miracles. There's one group, one body, it's so called in Yahweh Now that whole reasoning of uh, even on the Sabbath of um, doing the, uh, the healing the blind man is so that we can heal the uh, to be uh, the sick, the blind. So ultimately, everything in the physical, what we see today, has come to manifest to the spirit. And this is what Yahweh was doing, because you had Jake that uh, polluted the temples, okay, of of the Most High. So it's all about the spirit at this point. This is why you don't have to get dunked in the water. But these Christians. They will go get dumped, dunked in the water. <clears throat> okay. So I just, um, but we never said you must keep the entire law. But that's not us, as we said. <clears throat> okay. That's not us. So anyway, he says we use, we only use the King James version. We don't go into the history. I think all Israelites go into history. I'm not even going to talk, say that bad without any, just going into that. I mean. There's not an Israelite group, I know at least out of one West, that haven't went into some form of history to back up what we speak in the Bible as other sources. And we've done videos, okay, on um, uh, other Bibles as well. In fact, this will cut them because when you go into the original Bibles, it never said the word Gentile. That was another thing. It never said the word hell either. But these are the doctrines that they're pushing. That the Gentiles are just basically all always the other nations, and you will be burnt in hellfire. But it never said that in the original Bibles. So we do, we have done the history, okay? So we use more than that. And he said we take it out of context. This is why 
we go with the document because context means with the document so I'm going to just read probably quite a few scriptures and just roll right through it Matthew 5 and 17 says think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets why did he say that because you you know it was about you know the followers of the most high and his job was to come to die for the nation of Israel and to convince the gainsayers as well that he is the son of the most high right so he said hey I ain't come to destroy the law or the prophets I come not to destroy but to fulfill for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled so now we got to go into what is he talking about to all be fulfilled you think him just dying on the cross was just a fulfillment that was a partial part of it but you're different you're dealing in different time zones when you're talking about the spiritual realm the heavenly father and his son and the angels so 2,000 years have passed but it's been two days so him dying on the crooks as, as, as I call it I love to call it the cross him dying on a cross right that was just the start that ain't the fulfillment I mean that that was the end of his era here on the on, on the actual physical flesh on the on the earth but that wasn't the fulfillment the full fulfillment that's why it's called it uh, uh, to fill and then you have what you call fulfill right we'll get into that uh, Matthew um, uh, that word fulfill in Matthew um, uh, think now I come to in five G forty one thirty seven, right? Strong's G forty one thirty seven, play rao, play rao, play aro. Okay, so uh, we see this here. It's so many different definitions, and the reason why you have that because you'll have definitions and fulfill in one text, and in another text it'll mean something else. So you got to apply the proper context with the document. This guy says we don't. Uh, do that but this is what I'm doing here today okay it says to make full to fill that's why I said it's the difference between full and fill right to, to fulfill right um, it goes on to say there's a couple of them but I'm going to get to the point um, a number to make complete in every particular to render perfect okay has that happened when he died for the nation of Israel, because that's who he only died for, by the way, are they complete? Are they in particular rendered perfect? And that word perfect goes to completion. That's what we know that to be. This is why we see in Matthew 5 48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, meaning to be complete or to finish. We haven't finished. Yahweh hasn't finished. The one you call Jesus has not finished. He has not fulfilled. Okay? The whole thing hasn't been fulfilled. Why? Because the law is still existed. It has never been done away with. But that's what these Christians teach. We'll get into that too, Lord's will. Um, to complete in every particular rendered perfect way. To carry through to the end. To accomplish. To carry out. So you think I'm just dying on the cross, that was just the end, right? Let's go further. Let's go to Matthew 25 and 32. Let's go to um, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as your shepherd divided for sheep from the goat and he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left so when when Yahweh completed dying on the cross the crooks when was it fulfilled it says to all be fulfilled right this is what we just read in Matthew the fifth chapter right this is what we met in Matthew the, uh, was it Matthew 5 and 17 it said, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments sh and shall teach men so. So we know we're going to go off, but when you're teaching this, and this is what we see here with Christians saying that you don't have to keep the laws or the commandments. Right? Just They're done away with. See that? They, they're in place. And I'll get into that, Lord, as well. They're in place for a reason. 
If you start saying the law, I just talked to a Christian little maybe a week ago and said his wife told him you don't have to keep the law. You know what that's saying? Imagine this system telling you, you know what, you ain't got to worry about it. God got us. You ain't got to keep no laws in this place. You know what'll happen? You'll have rapists, unlawful rapists on an all time high, right? You'll have theft, murder, you have all these things now, but it will be elevated to another level. This is what you see when you talk about the defunding the police. You're saying, hey, you ain't got to keep the law. And you know what happens when you don't keep the law? Crime, right? Destruction, wickedness, evilness. And this is why Paul said what he said, and Lewis, will I get into that too? Because uh, it's a lot to go into. You telling people don't keep the law. That was the God of the Old Testament. But well, Malachi 3 and 6 said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob will not be consumed. And so let's go to Luke 24 and 44. And it says, And he said unto them, This is Jesus, Yahweh These are the words which I spake unto you while, while, while I was yet with you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be ful fulfilled, not filled, but fulfilled, right? which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms you see it here in the book of Psalms concerning me when he said sit on the right hand until I make my enemies my footstool or something of that nature so like if I'm quoting it wrong so um, let's see what was written in the law of Moses in, in the Psalms that's concerning him let's go to Deuteronomy 30 and 6 and it says and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and thy heart of thy seed, right, to love the Lord thy God, right, Yahweh, with all thy heart. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. And will uh, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live, right? And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon his enemy, th thine enemies, right? Have we seen that of all the enemies? Go to Jeremiah 30 and 16, <clears throat> right? And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, right? And to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, right? And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous, plenteous uh, in, uh, in every work of thine hand, and in the fruit of the body, and in the fruit of the cattle, and in the fruit of the land, for the good, for the, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers right so we can also go into uh, Hebrews the 8th chapter which he likes to go you know these Christians they like to try to separate the Old Testament from the New Testament when really it's a testament right um, so let's go to Hebrews 8 and 8 it says for finding fault with them he said, Behold, uh, the days come when, uh, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Right? Not according to that which I made with their fathers in the day where I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not my covenant, and I, regard, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah um, after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their heart and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Right. This is when it's going to come into the new covenant, which we're not in the new covenant. The reason why we in this gap of when Yahweh Shah died up to the deliverance is because the, uh, the elect, it's all for the elect and everybody to play out a role for the day of judgment because all those spirits are back here to play out their role of judgment. Okay, so let's move on. I mean, it's a lot of scriptures to go to, but I'm, you know, some of them I'm quoting. So um, let's go to Matthew uh, ten thirty four. Ten thirty four, right? Think not that I come to uh, to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. So you're telling me he fulfilled the law. It's all done away with. Nobody has to worry about anything anymore because the laws is done away with. What kind of madness does that make? What, does that make any sense? He dies on the cross, say the law is done away with, all you got to do is believe. But clearly he quoted, this guy, Christian even quoted, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 
So these people go into these churches, they follow all the ideology of Babylon, right? They do all the wicked things of the world, they eat the crabs, they eat the shrimp, and say, hey, it got to do with the law. But meanwhile, they, he just quoted the scripture where, where Yahweh was quoting back where, with Isaiah when it says, these people follow me with their, their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Let's go to Mark 12 and 29, right? Blast session on you Christians, man. Uh, and Jesus, Yahweh answered him, this is the scribes, one of the scribes came and asked um, Jesus this, the first of all commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our Lord is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. But you say, you know what? You can eat crabs. You can eat shrimp. We can keep part of the law, right? The part we want to keep, but we don't keep it to the best of our ability. No, the law is not going to save you. But this first commandment of doing it to the best of your ability, right, is what we need to be doing. You cannot just sit up there and... Uh, and then act, keep asking for grace and mercy and willfully sin. That's like getting a goddamn ticket and a, and a cop give you a goddamn citation and a warning and then you come back, okay, now that can do it again. This is the mindset of Christians, man. Let's go to Romans 6 and 14. For sin shall not have dominion over, the, over you, for ye are not the, under the law but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Yahweh forbid. Yahweh forbid. So these are excuses to sin. This is that's all this is. This is why they say that. No, the, the scriptures also say, you know talk about um, the laws and you know obviously you can't keep certain laws. This is why grace is bestowed and mercy is bestowed amongst the elect. Because they can't. But they will still follow the first commandment to the best of their ability. That doesn't give you a right to sin. That's why Apostle Paul said, Yahweh forbid. Shall we sin because we're under grace? No. Because he was dealing with a turmoil time where he thought, where people, uh, he had to commit some form of balance using guile and balance. So if somebody had a bald face that was a Greek, he would say, oh, come on in the temple. Or he might say, come on in the, uh, uh, yeah, the temple, wherever. Come on in the house, man. And then you would have the, 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 uh, the over-righteous Israelites. Man, he don't have no beard. Why, why, why are you letting them in? Because we have to be reborn, man. You just can't tell somebody to come up to the camp to grow his beard. He's not ready for that. This is what Paul was going into. Some jakes are not ready for that, man. Anyway, I hope I covered everything. I might have missed some things, missed some points. There's a whole lot of scriptures on that, but I just wanted to touch on that. Yes, we must keep the law to the best of our ability. We must follow the first commandment to the best of our ability. And no, not all camps are the same. Not all camps teach the same. Just like all you Christians uh, who claim to love Jesus and be every, you know, do everything for Jesus, but you all have different doctrines. But you get mad at us when we get on you because you have the most false doctrine. Right? You have that white Jesus. That's all I have on that shallow wall.